Just one word? Hope. Engagement. Life-saving. Welcoming. Awesome. Creative. Fine. Inspiring. Superb. Nice. Friendly. Supportive. Proud. Helpful. Valued. Understanding. Safe. Hello, I'm Lucy and I'm a peer mentor with the Far Away Kick. We thought it would be useful to have a video detailing some of our experiences of the autism diagnostic process. So here we are. I'm joined by my colleague Rosemary, who also works for the Kick, and Jonathan and Amber, who attend some of our groups. So can we introduce ourselves, giving our age now and when we were diagnosed? My name is Rosemary. I'm 38. I was... 34 and 11 months when I was diagnosed. I'm Jonathan, I'm 57 and I was diagnosed when I was 54 years old. My name's Amber, uh, I'm currently 35. I was 32 when I got diagnosed. So I am 37 now and I was diagnosed five years ago when I was 32. What did it feel like to be diagnosed with autism? A relief, a big, big relief to want to finally understand what was going on, why I process the world differently and why I was struggling so much. Um, it felt like I'd finally got some answers. And then it felt like uh, a chance to start again almost but with a better understanding of myself I felt relieved and vindicated that at last people would be able to understand why I was like I was or I am like I am when I was going through the diagnostic process a lot of it didn't match my experience it didn't connect to how I felt it was only really when I started talking to other autistic people that I started recognizing things and then once I'd received my diagnostic paperwork my confirmation of diagnosis it was like the world tipped sideways like lenses had adjusted everything tipped it over so suddenly instead of being just noise and splatters like paint brushes just splattered on a canvas all of a sudden somebody turned this canvas sideways and it was a picture I suddenly recognized this I, I understood this I understood who I was <clears throat> the world made a lot more sense I'd been walking along sideways and all of a sudden I'd been put the right way up and everything fell into place I started to understand myself a lot better and um, yeah when I was diagnosed, it was a huge relief because it gave me solid answers to why I found certain things difficult. Um, it was simultaneously the best and the worst news, purely because of the stigma surrounding the word autism, which uh, I appreciate is a whole different video. Um, so what do you wish someone had told you before you were diagnosed? Sometimes it's a long process, but it's worth it to get the information and be patient. Information about the services and options open to autistic people post-diagnosis. I want to say I wish they'd told me what to expect, but I don't know whether I would have believed it at the time. I think if somebody had told me what to expect, I'd have overthought it as well. And I appreciate that's an entirely autistic thing. I wish someone had told me that suddenly everyone you know becomes an autism expert and they're not shy about telling you that you don't fit their narrow view of what autism looks like. 
it's infuriating. Um, what would you say to someone who's currently going through the diagnostic process? Take your time. Look at the diagnostic criteria because that is what they're working on and write down everything you can remember that happened to you as a child that, that you did as a child that matches up and also what you do now that matches up because you are going to need to arm yourself with evidence. It takes a very long time after the diagnosis to come to terms with the fact that you've got autism. It's not something that will happen overnight. Certainly, and it varies from moment to moment. Be yourself. And I know that sounds really trite. I know that sounds easy and simple. But trust your own instincts you've probably had a lifetime of people telling you no you can't hear that no that's not real no people don't do that that's not how everything is your experiences are real they are your life this is how you've lived and you've had a whole world telling you that's not right but they don't experience things like you do at the risk of sounding patronising, well done, because it's a long and arduous process. Um, to be honest, that process doesn't really stop. I learn things about myself every day. I think the most beneficial thing I did for myself was connect with other autistic people, because it really helps you appreciate just how diverse and interesting the autistic spectrum is. We've all been in your position, and it takes time, but it does get easier. Hello, my name is Emma and I've been working at the Faraway Kick allotment this year. It's been our first year on site and we've been really busy. When we started, it looked a little bit like a jungle, but in a few short months, we've made and installed raised beds. We've grown a bunch of produce that's included chards and squashes, leeks, cabbages and herbs. A few things didn't do so well, but we're looking at that as a learning curve. So next year we're taking soil samples. When you visit the allotment, it's safe to expect that we've usually got more than a few projects going on at any one time. So you're welcome to come down and join in with anything from prepping the ground to sowing seeds, planting or painting hypertone mushrooms. For the future, what we want is to secure funding so that we can build a shelter so that we can run workshops throughout the year. We need a shed for storing equipment and a supply of ecologically sourced wood so that we can do wood carving and craft workshops throughout the year when there's not so much growing that needs doing. If you want any more information, please contact us at info at thefarawaykick.org. We are probably all aware of the theory that we are either left or right brained the left hemisphere being more logical and analytical, and the right hemisphere, creative and intuitive. And while it's probably true that each individual has either a left or right brain dominance, the human mind is actually far more complex than that, particularly if you happen to be neurodivergent. The left or right brain hypothesis has become so ingrained in society that many people almost define themselves as being one thing, which shuts off a world of experiences and possibilities. So what if you believe you're not creative? I would respectfully disagree, particularly if you're neurodivergent, because I believe certain aspects of our autism make us predisposed to be able to see things differently, which is the ultimate driving force behind creation. Leonardo da Vinci was widely thought to have been on the autistic spectrum. And according to a paper by Professor Marco Catani of King's College London, also displayed prominent signs of ADHD. The Mona Lisa is one of the most recognisable paintings in the world and was made by da Vinci during a period of intense preoccupation with geometry. Da Vinci was specifically preoccupied at this time with the golden ratio, which was thought to provide divine proportion and is derived from the Fibonacci sequence, which is obviously inherently mathematical. The golden ratio describes predictable patterns that are everywhere, such as in the number and arrangement of leaves around the stem of a plant. 
in the formation of a shell. We find it in architecture and even in the formation of galaxies. Autistic people are naturally inclined to see patterns in things, and this happened whether we understand them on a mathematical level or not. This piece of work is called Rings, and it was made by an artist called John Adams for the Cheltenham Science Festival in 2011. Adams is a trained geologist who has stated that his obsessions have allowed him to notice and reflect on patterns that would otherwise go unnoticed. He also believes that obsessions and repetitive behaviours in autistic people are purposeful and allow us to think in a different and unique way. A common misconception is that you have to be a visual thinker to create art. These are pieces of work by an illustrator called Megan Rhiannon, who is autistic and also has aphantasia, which is the inability to visualise mental imagery. She takes a more pragmatic approach by creating illustrations which are based entirely on what she observes in the world around her. Stephen Wiltshire is an architectural artist, an autistic savant, who takes observation to a whole new level due to his eidetic memory. The fact that he can draw such detailed cityscapes from memory is astounding, and his ability to hyperfocus on his interest is something a lot of autistic people have in common. So what if you think you're not good enough to create art? It honestly doesn't matter what your skill level is or what medium you want to work in. Art is accessible to everyone, primarily as a means of creative expression, which can be so important when you feel misunderstood and isolated as many of us do. It's okay to give some things a go on a purely therapeutic basis. For example, there are many different ways of working that can be beneficial if you stim, any sort of repetitive motion can be really soothing, such as doodling, embroidery, knitting, or wood carving. Art can be anything you want it to be, and that's what makes it so powerful. We currently run a social arts and crafts group on a Wednesday evening, which is a chance for people to meet, chat, and work informally. We also have an eight-week art course, which will be available to book soon, where we'll look more in depth at different methodologies and techniques with a view to creating a fully considered piece of work. Our collective, Faraway Creatives, is available for anyone to join. We'll be working towards group projects and exhibitions, and we're also able to sell work through our Etsy shop. We take a 20% commission from anything sold through us, which will then go back into the kick. So in theory, Faraway Creatives will become fully self-generating. There's no pressure to sell anything through us, but we'd like to potentially create passive incomes for people who might find it difficult to sell their own arts or crafts. If you're interested in joining Faraway Creatives, contact us via our Facebook page.